In this video, we're going to be taking a look at using Voltage Modular as an effect. One of the cool things about Voltage Modular is that it also includes another plugin called Voltage Modular Effects, and this can be applied as an effect to any track, just like any other effect, so you can use this on both audio and virtual instruments. This is also included with Voltage Modular Nucleus, and everything I'm going to show you here today can actually be done inside of Nucleus, so hopefully this gives you some ideas and inspiration to get started getting creative with effects. As you might have already noticed, if you take a look at the top bar of Voltage Modular, next to the main outs you have the audio in. As you probably know, the main outs are used to send audio out of Voltage Modular to your DAW, which is what you do when you create a synth patch. All you need to do to create an effect is just route the audio in into the Voltage Modular patch and there you go. The really cool thing about using the Voltage Modular Effects plugin is that it's entirely modular and you have full access to all of the capabilities that Voltage Modular offers. So if you wanted to create a traditional effect like just a basic delay, you can certainly do that using Voltage Modular. But if you wanted to get something more crazy like a distortion that's controlled by the level of a signal that's then fed into a reverb and filtered out, and then that filter is controlled by a step sequencer that's then clocked from a sample and hold element LFO. You can totally do something like that. We won't be getting that crazy specific today, but rather I wanted to show you a bit more of a practical application of using voltage modular effects in a track and talk about a couple modules that I think are really handy to understand. So before we dive into it, I wanted to show you this track here. So all of the sounds you hear are actually created with voltage modular outside of these bells. These are just some samples I found in the Mixcraft library. So let's take a listen to the track now. So that's what I'm working with, and I actually used voltage modular effects on these bell patches to get that kind of cool morphing, twisting, liquidy filter sound. To get a better listen, let's solo out this bell patch here and loop it and take a listen to that in isolation. So I want you to listen to the filter movement here, but you'll also notice that it's stereo. So it's a pretty cool effect and you hear it just kind of helps it move around and sit a bit more organically in the beat and just provide a bit more sonic interest than another bell patch. Before the effect is applied, this is actually what it sounds like. We'll deactivate the voltage modular effects and take a listen here. Which is just, I don't know, a bit grating and annoying and honestly just a bit flat. And I think this modular effect patch really brings it to life. So this is the patch itself, and I'm just going to duplicate all of this and wire it up from scratch so you can kind of see the exact order of operations. I'm just going to highlight and hold alt and drag all of these down, and we can work from the start. The first things I added to create this were a sync divider and an 8-step sequencer. So the step sequencer is what's providing the movement to the filters. Then I've got the sync divider, which is how I sync this to my project tempo. If you ever want to create a synced effect like this filter movement here, all you need to do is use a sync divider and then something that will accept that clock signal. To use the sync divider, it's actually pretty straightforward. If we look in the top here, you'll see this transport area. We have play, stop, sync out, and play gate. Wiring this up is actually pretty straightforward. To do this, you just take the sync out here. So we'll grab another output of that and put it in the sync in of the input of the sync divider. And for the reset, we can grab the play. Let's grab another output of that and wire it up to the reset. That way, whenever we hit play, it starts the effect over. It's not a free running effect. It's going to stay locked in time. Now we just need to wire up our step sequencer. So to do that, we're going to take the clock out here and put that to the external clock input of the eight step sequencer. And then we'll hit the external button to engage the external clock. What this means is that this step sequencer is now going to follow the sync from the sync divider, which is getting the sync from our project. To get this step sequencer working, we need to wire up a couple other things, including the stop, start, and reset. For the stop here in the 8-step sequencer, we're going to grab the stop output here in the transport, so we'll wire that in. 
for the start, we need to grab play. So we'll grab another output of play and wire that into start here. For reset, you can use the start again. So let's go here and grab this last one. So whenever we hit play, it's going to reset the sequencer to make sure that it starts from step one. To create the movement for the effect, I just moved around the sliders here. This really doesn't matter. You can just experiment. I found that this kind of had a nice groove and bounce to it. And then from there, I just set my sync divider to a note value. In this case, it's quarter notes. So at this point, we've got all our tempo syncing stuff ready. Now we need to start routing the audio so that it's affected. As you probably guessed, we're going to go up to the audio in here. So this is audio in from host, which means this is the audio of the track that voltage modular effects is applied on. Now we just need to route this into our filter. So I'm going to take the left input here and route that to the audio in of the first filter. Then we'll go to the right and route that into the audio input of the second filter. To get audio out of voltage modular, now we need to route the outputs to the main out. In this case, I'm using low pass filters. So we'll grab the low pass output here, wire that to the output and this other low pass and wire it to the right. So that way we have two separate filters, one for each side of the stereo field. So now we need to modulate our filters. And to do that, I'm just taking the output here of the step sequencer and plugging that into the frequency mod one of the filter and adjusting the mod amount to taste. Then we're going to do this to the second filter. But if we did this right now, the thing is, is we're going to get the same modulation and it's really not all that interesting. I want a lot of movement and a really cool liquidy, groovy type of filter effect going on. To do that, I've got this module here called Attenuverter, and an Attenuverter is actually a pretty simple and also pretty powerful module and something that's really good to understand. So what is an Attenuverter and what does it do? An Attenuverter is a combination of two different words. We have Attenuator and we have Inverter, and that's really all that this does. It allows you to attenuate a signal, making it act as like a volume knob or just a level amount, and an Inverter, which then inverts the signal that's coming out of it. In the modular world, everything functions around CV, and that's kind of the lifeblood of everything that happens inside of modular synths. And the cool thing with CV is it has a range of 10 volts. This goes from negative 5 to positive 5. So with the attenuverter, we can access that negative side of things to invert a signal and therefore create opposite movement, which is how I get that cool moving stereo filter effect. So to utilize that in this patch, what I did is grab another output of the 8-step sequencer and bring that to the input of the attenuverter. From there, I just grabbed the output of the attenuverter here and brought it into the frequency mod one of the second filter and made sure that the invert button was checked. This way, it's getting the opposite modulation that the first filter is. To make it even more different, I utilized the attenuverter to dial back the amount of modulation it's receiving as well. So that way, it's just not the total opposite. It's the opposite signal and not quite totally the same. That way, it's a bit more unpredictable and interesting. And that's really all there is to understand about this patch. It's pretty simple and actually sounds pretty cool. From here, I adjusted the filter cutoff and just added a touch of resonance to both of the filters to get things a bit more interesting. So let's take a listen once again. I'm going to unwire the second copy because we don't really need it. And let's take a listen to what this does to the patch. And that's really all there is to wiring up modular effects inside of Voltage Modular. So I hope you found this video helpful and hopefully inspiring to get out and start experimenting with Voltage Modular effects because it's a pretty cool plugin and you can have a lot of fun with it. If you come up with something cool, feel free to share it to us on social media and tag us at Voltage Modular. And I think that wraps it up for this video. For more information on Voltage Modular or to pick up a copy for yourself, you can head over to cherryaudio.com.